She spits three bloody teeth out onto the floor beside your feet and grins crimson at you. I truly didn't think you'd have that much fight in you. I'll win my title back, I will. But first, I'm gonna find somebody a lot nicer than you to kiss all this better. The dog lies there quietly, clearly in great pain. It snaps at your hand. It flinches. A low, threatening growl builds within its throat. Under the collar, you find the sharpened points of metal rivets, gouging the poor dog's skin. The dog bears its teeth at you and growls. The dog gives you a long, hard stare, but does not bite you, yet. The dog goes to bite your hand, and then realizes the pain is gone. He licks your hand and grins. Then he turns to his master, gives him one loud bark of protest, and leaves. Penny for a grieving beggar whose dog ran away. God damn it! How was my livelihood? Penny for a grieving beggar? I reckon I'm owed it here. You wouldn't do that, would you? Oh, yes. You would do that, wouldn't you? I couldn't prevail upon you to change your mind, could I? He gives you a cool look, then rummages in his pocket. He hands you the contents. That's your lot. Go on, then. Get lost, you freeloader. I'm working here. Thank you for bringing Queen Justinia's letter to my attention. Soon she will hear the hammer fall. I have all the evidence I need to prove Queen Justinia is plotting against the Magisters. All we need to do now is take care of the pup she sent to play. No harm. He stares at you with a look of disgust on his face. As far as I know, Lohar is still alive after all, even though we talked about changing. The investigation has long since drawn to a close. No thanks to you.
Hello, Mr. Lizard. The little boy beside her looks at you. He picks his nose. Hello, ugly. That's right. I think he's an idiot. And when he gets back, I'm going to tell him so. Hello, Mr. Lizard. The little boy beside her looks at you. He picks his nose. Hello, ugly. Cool. How did you know that? Lizard, have you seen our friend Joe? They are innocents in a world with precious little innocents left. Let's leave them that way. The truth hurts, but they'll get over it. The children turn to each other, relieved. See, Ben? I told you so. If Fort Joy wasn't nice, they'd come home to Driftwood. Well, I guess so. Thank you, Mr. Lizard. Now, if you don't mind, we're busy waiting for our friend. Bye-bye, Lizard. The kids turn back to the water. Ben picks his nose. Back off, pigeon! This is my bridge, and I don't suffer fools on it. The enormous, unusually red troll looms over you with his fists clenched threateningly. His expression is stern, yet you can see the tiniest twinkle in his intelligent eyes. Didn't hear me the first time, parrot! He smiles a jagged and magnanimous grin. Each pitchfork-pointed tooth seems to threaten you individually. We'll see. You want to cross my bridge? Look at this wreck. No taxpayer coin has touched it in a hot century. He kicks the edge of the bridge, sending a sizable chunk of rock flying perilously close to your eye. I'm the only thing standing between this bridge and the void. These days, everything is in decline. He rubs his leathery hands together with glee. <laughs> sure, sure. One regular priced bridge crossing coming right up. And I don't want to hear any whiny little baby noises about it either. His eyes narrow to glinting slits and a deep laugh shakes his whole frame. <laughs> there is one thing, the competition. Take out my competition, and I could waive the usual fee. Uh, 
a little magpie feather named Mog. He's not fit to be a bridge keeper. He took over the other bridge across, and he's too cheap. I can't compete with his ridiculous prices. That's a little non-committal, but I'll take what I can get around here. Grog drags a rough map in the dust of the bridge with one claw. He then spends an inordinate amount of time sketching a highly vulgar doodle of this marge he wants you to take care of. There. Now, for the moment, you'll need to back off. No pay, no stay. I bet you're the musical sort. You ever thought about taking up the lute? I got a few ready to go, all freshly strung. You never bothered to find the melody in ya. A shame. You just gotta look. <laughs> My brother Laszlo couldn't carry a tune in a bucket when he were a wee thing. Now, he's got the voice of an angel. Manchester's came, stole them away. I keep going though, hoping to get to Ark sooner than later. Lucian's day crowds will be wanting some musical trifles. Useful? Ah, you mean deadly. Used to make bows and fletch arrows, but left that hobby behind. to the bone, but the truth is more like a bludgeon, ain't it? Maybe I could do my part to help your efforts. Come back later, then. I need a bit of time to carve something useful.
paladins up ahead. Men of my vintage. I wonder if I served with any of them back in the war. asking Red Prince eh in that case you better talk to Sir Hardwin center bridge can't miss him Careful on the road, stranger. You're safe enough in here, but past the bridge you're on your own. We're doing well enough for now. We've lost many a man to death and desertion, but we still hold the bridge. Guy Falchard and Lord Godfrey fell in the last melee. The Void Woken will be back, be sure of it. Beyond the bridge, the world has gone to hell. The Magisters are out there now, hunting down a sorcerer. Although I suspect it's the other way around. <coughs> not amongst paladins, it's not. Adlard, Gale, and Hellis Jupp all left their posts. Fortimir too, I suspect. Gone to serve a friend, they said, and maybe that's true. No matter. We'll fight the Void Woken with what we have, and we'll win. A weary paladin strips equipment from the bodies of the dead, singing softly to himself. He looks you up and down, then nods a greeting. Ah, oh, pity you just arrived. We could have used adventurers like you in that last fight. We're short-handed, deserters, if you can believe that. Abandoned their post and wandered off into the wastelands. Left their friends here to die. Shameful. We think alike, you and I. See the captain, adventurer. He'll put some work your way. A senior paladin sits hunched over a tattered map. He registers your presence, sits back in his chair, taps his fingers on the map. Who are you and who sent you? You must be the Red Prince. I did meet with a Brahmos, yes, but he's no longer here. Some lizards came along, rather shady looking types if you ask me. Before I knew it, the fellow you're looking for was gone. Across the bridge. Last I heard, one of my scouts saw him heading down the southern road bound for Stone Garden. A graveyard. Now, if you'll excuse me. He looks back down at his map but then seems to change his mind. Actually, hang on for another moment, would you? I think I've heard about you. Didn't you free the Meister from the gallows in Driftwood? Ah, yes. Discretion is the soul of valor, as they say. I may have a job for a lizard of great valor and discretion. Interested? The truth. Between battlefield losses and desertion, I barely have enough live bodies to hold the bridge. Besides, this job is better done by someone other than a paladin. Someone... like you. He taps a finger on the map on the table. Here, in the Black Pits, are White Magisters. Their operation is shrouded in mystery, and this pricks our ears. We are... Gravely concerned. 
We believe the White Magisters may have strayed into the darkness. We suspect that Dallas herself and her master, Vriedemann, are the inspiration for these dark endeavors. Look under the white veil of secrecy and report back. How much do you want? I have fewer paladins to pay, so I have ready gold. But there are limits. He thinks on this. It's a hefty amount. But for a job well done, we can stretch to it. He offers you an item. A whistle-like device sits nestled in your hand. When you're ready, send a war owl. Be careful out there. It's a dangerous place these days. And I'd like to think I'll hear from you again. And adventurer. He looks you in the eye. Don't get caught. Sighting a stocky paladin seated ahead, Ifan tugs at your sleeve. This one I remember. Hardwin and I served together back in the war. Let me do the talking. The two men embrace amicably enough, but you sense an uneasy tension running beneath their smiles. Well, as I live and scarcely breathe, if it isn't Ifan Ben Mesden. I thought you died in the death fog. I thought you died a hero. But I suppose it's better to live as one. We really gave those black ring what for, eh? Wiped them all out in the blink of an eye. Damned proud to have served with you, Ben Mesda. Damned proud. Ifan's face turns sour as he mutters something under his breath that only the paladin can hear. Hardwin loses all camaraderie and blanches, stepping backwards. He puts one hand on his weapon. You. You've changed. And for the worse. I'll not have the sacrifices of my fallen brothers maligned to my face. You survived, Ben Mesda. Be thankful for that, if nothing else. I heard you might be coming through this way. Good on you for the help you gave Loar. Good on you indeed. If you're looking to fight, I can use the help. If you're looking to chat while enjoying the view, then bugger off. Say nothing to no one, but I'm doing Loar's good work too. I'll be helping the pallies here with their uprising in arts.
find eggs? Did, didn't, do? Yes, yes, you look just the type. Egg thief, I knew it. I found the culprit. Tell that to Big Marge, if you dare. Find eggs? Did? Didn't? Do? Did you hear? The eggs are gone! Gone for good! No one to keep them warm! No one to keep them safe! Not my eggs! Our eggs! All the family! All the eggs! Every last one! Big Marge, sir! Big Marge will tell you everything! I, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, they were stolen, the babies, the eggs, something, something took them. Horror, thief, horrible thief, it came in the night, it took the eggs, it scrambled away fast, fast, fast. If, if, if I showed you, you could bring them back. In a flurry of feathers, she leaps up and picks a small hole in your map. That's where they are. I went after my babies. I saw where they went. But they've changed so much, so much, much, much. <laughs> much. Bring them back. One on the pectured egg behind them. Perhaps there's still a chance. There you are, little egg. She leaps up and grabs the egg with her foot. 
kicking it under her warm underbelly and settling down upon it contentedly. Shh, 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 little Beaver baby, Mama's here, warm and here with you again. She cocks her black eye up at you and winks. Thank you. Oh, ah! I have something for you. Something I buried behind the coop. It's yours. It's yours. Unless some other scratchly poker found it first, of course. I've spotted something. Do you ever think about running off, like Barnby and Sam did? Hell no. You know what Raymond could do with his daughters? Aldous, Fedor, what have you to you? Thank you, For whoever's been disappearing, Majesty's. Well, I'll not be sleeping tonight. Thank you. 
Can't I go and play with the others? No can do, Chickadee. You're not leaving my sight for a while longer yet. <laughs> <laughs> 